Open your eyes and see. The Bible tells us that terrible times are coming. The book of Daniel tells us that the end will come like a flood. That war will continue to the end and desolations have been decreed. That means that everything ultimately will be wiped out. People will be gripping the church pews and digging their nails into the cushions of the seats in horror of the fact that they have been left behind. There will be bitter weeping and the longing for just one more opportunity to hear that Jesus Christ is coming back, but it will be too late. We are living in a time when people are scoffing at the coming of Christ at the midnight hour and they are not ready. So they will be like the foolish virgins when Jesus comes back. The Bible says afterward, the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, truly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The world is in turmoil and America is on the verge of destruction. But the routine and comfortable lifestyle has blinded us from seeing that possibility. Nations are rising against nations. Wars are at a tipping point. We are seeing unprecedented violence, uprising, riots, protests, and spiritual wickedness like never before. Jesus says there is coming a time that will be unmatched from the past. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 21 through 22, Jesus says, Then there will be great tribulation such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time. No, nor ever shall be. Unless those days were shortened, no flesh will be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. Injustice is the new justice. You know we're living in the last days when an American gets indicted, removed from ballots, demonized and shot for trying to preserve what's left of America's Republic. Cannot deny that it was a millimeter miracle that was able to save this man's life. Could it be that Jesus Christ preserved him for such a time as this? Our government has become corrupt through many of its politicians, federal agencies, judges, school districts, and teachers. But indeed, America will not escape the end times. All of these things are the evidence that the prophetic clock of the end times is winding down. Right after the Antichrist rises to power at the beginning of the tribulation, we can see how the events from the second seal of judgment that is broken by the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, is absolutely possible in our time. Revelation chapter 6 verse 3 through 5 says, When he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature saying, Come and see. Another horse, fiery red, went out, and it was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth, and that people should kill one another, and there was given to him a great sword. We have unbelievable division in America alone. Hatred and emotional sensitivity is rampant. Political, ideological, and moral intolerance is excessively heightened by the mainstream media, and most people are easily influenced some to the point of committing unthinkable acts. The ungodly suppress the truth, they cancel the truth, they promote lies as the truth, and they persecute those who want to live according to the truth. So the Bible says in Romans chapter 1, verse 28 through 32, Furthermore, just as they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, so God gave them over to a depraved mind, so that they do what ought not to be done. They have become filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, and depravity. They are full of envy, strife, murder, deceit, and malice. They are gossips, slanderers, God-haters, insolent, arrogant, and boastful. They invent ways of doing evil. They disobey their parents. They have no understanding, no fidelity, no love, no mercy. Although they know God's righteous decree that those who do such things deserve death. They not only continue to do these very things, but also approve of those who practice them. God help us. Jesus made the culture want to be like him. And it wasn't because he was trying to please people. He was counterculture, which is the reason why multitudes followed him from place to place. Jesus came to save souls. He didn't come to be like the world, preparing the world for the religious system of the Antichrist. Listen, you only have two options. Either you live for Jesus and chill in heaven, or you live in sin and burn in hell. Jesus is not joking. His blood that was shed on the cross was costly and a whole lot of people will be paying the price real soon. But I hope you're not one of them. It's time to wake up, church. Not everyone who claims Christian 
is of the faith. First Corinthians chapter six, verse nine through 10 says, or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor greedy, nor those habitually drunk, nor verbal abusers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. Such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and in the spirit of our God. But there is no such thing as a saved sinner. That is an oxymoron. We should no longer be a slave to sin as a believer. But if you find yourself entangled in unrepentant sin, you take that sin and you take that addiction and you kill it. Do whatever it takes to be free from the traps of the devil. Fast, pray, and consume the word of God because Satan is headed to the lake of fire and he's trying to take as many people with him as he can. Even when you go to church, you should have your spiritual war clothes on, guarded and strapped with the sword of the spirit and filtering every sermon through the word of God. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 1, the Bible says, Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. In Jude chapter 1, verse 3 through 4, Jude urges the church and says, I felt compelled to write and urge you to contend for the faith that was once for all entrusted to God's holy people. For certain individuals whose condemnation was written about long ago have secretly slipped in among you. They are ungodly people who pervert the grace of our God into a license for immorality and deny Jesus Christ our only sovereign and Lord. We are living in the time where all of the sins of the times of Noah and all of the sins of Sodom and Gomorrah and all of the sins of the times of Babel have all converged in order to form our society today. We're living in a time of the falling away. Jesus tells us in Matthew 24 that in the last days, many will fall away from the faith, betray and hate each other. This is the time of the falling away. The second Thessalonians chapter two tells us will happen right before the Antichrist is revealed, where people will turn their backs on God, where people who know the truth will not follow the truth because they're trying to make a life for themselves. And where people will fall into great deception through the spirit of the Antichrist, who saturates the institutions of our society through demonic influence. Jesus says, when you see these things begin to happen, stand up and lift up your heads because your redemption is near. We are surrounded by signs, but because we live in this physical reality, many of us can't really imagine Jesus coming back. But Jesus said, watch. It might seem like he's taken a long time to come back, but he says, watch. We might look at the news and it seems like the devil is winning, but Jesus says, watch. He said, my words will not return unto me void, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Watch. Listen, you must give an account for your own life. Nobody can do it for you. If your pastor abandons his faith, are you going to turn your back on Christ too? Jesus says, you must follow me. How would the church overcome the world? The Bible says that it is by our faith. It is through the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. For we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. In Mark chapter 13, verse 35 to 37, Jesus says, Therefore, keep watch because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening or at midnight or when the rooster crows or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone. Watch. Tell me what's wrong and why.